SARS coronavirus 2. SARS coronavirus 2, uh, beginning in 2019, uh, a physician and then several physicians in Wuhan, China, began to notice the emergence of a fairly severe respiratory illness, beginning with mild upper respiratory tract infection signs, but rapidly progressing to severe under uh, underlying or lower respiratory tract disease. This illness was also characterized by high infectivity and an incredibly high caseload. Uh, because of that high infectivity and the impact on healthcare systems and certainly on patients with severe lower respiratory disease, that virus or that infection began to gain notice internationally as the cause of a potential uh, following pandemic. In fact, uh, ultimately, the virus identified uh, causing this infectious process was a member of the coronavirus family and aligned very closely with former uh, outbreak viruses, including Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS virus, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS virus. And to that end, the virus has now been named Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, coronavirus 2, the second one in the lineage of SARS respiratory type illnesses. The disease associated with SARS coronavirus 2 uh, is Coronavirus Infectious Disease 2019, or COVID-19, as it has been nicknamed. And it is characterized, again, by that high infectivity, high attack rate in a population, and potential progression to severe pneumonia, including acute respiratory distress syndrome and multi-organ dysfunction failure and severe acute respiratory syndrome. The initial COVID-19 process began, as I noted, in Wuhan, China, but rapidly spread to other uh, nearby provinces in China, followed by spread to other uh, areas or countries in Asia, including South Korea and Japan, and then, unfortunately, and now, to the rest of the world, where nearly every country in the world has checked in with cases. An incredibly unfortunate inclusion in this are cruise ships which are floating hotels uh, in which multiple patients uh, in a closed space can be and have been infected and then must undergo quarantine. Uh, in March 2020, the World Health Organization named COVID-19 as a pandemic in large part to stimulate uh, all countries around the world to create and implement a intense global response with the goal of, of limiting internal spread and hopefully even limiting further global spread. The Clinical aspects of COVID-19, first of all, high infectivity, high attack rate, uh, very easy through respiratory droplet to be uh, infected with the disease. Uh, majority of cases uh, are mild as noted. In fact, at least 80, if not more, 85% uh, of cases are indeed mild. Those occurring in children, young adults, even some older adults. But severe disease can and does occur, uh, most especially in patients with some risk factors, including those of older age, so age 60 and higher, uh, those patients who have some degree of immunodeficiency, whether they are immunocompromised, immunosuppressed, uh, or something like that. Uh, certainly those patients who have pre-existing lung or even other organ disease, uh, including those with type 1 insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. The mortality rates estimated at 1 to 6%, although this is only an estimate as of this point, because the N, the denominator, is not yet known. The virus testing is so far not complete, and so the number of mild cases who are not coming for testing are not known. Hence, it, it's hard to predict exactly what the true mortality rate is. That said, comparing mortality rates of COVID-19 to influenza, uh, it is estimated to be at least tenfold higher, if not more. Those areas of either the world or patients who have a mortality rate of 6% typically are those with an older average age or those who are in a closed, uh, unprotected environment, such as an extended care facility, a cruise ship, a nursing home, etc. Clinically, the incubation period for COVID-19 is, is thought to be two days to 14 days, uh, with a tail end, however, of at least 21 days. Uh, concerning evidence just emerging is that the virus itself, SARS coronavirus 2, may persist in an infectious state for at least three to four days, if not longer, on environmental surfaces, including countertops, uh, utensils, uh, doorknobs, etc., and so forth. After the incubation period, uh, most patients present uh, with fever, uh, over 60% may have a dry cough and myalgias, so, so far a very influenza-like uh, illness. However, 
Shortness of breath occurring in over 30% so far is emerging as a symptom or a complaint, which may be more specifically predictive of infection with COVID-19 versus influenza, rhinovirus, uh, parainfluenza, etc. As noted, those patients who go on to severe disease uh, do so by entering into respiratory failure, uh, followed by hypotensive shock, multi-organ dysfunction, uh, etc. Diagnosis. Well, first and foremost, as one would anticipate, um, given that COVID-19 occurs simultaneously with other respiratory illnesses, it is important to evaluate for and hopefully exclude other such illnesses, uh, such as influenza, parainfluenza, rhinovirus, uh, even other coronaviruses causing upper respiratory tract infection, and even including uh, uh, bacterial pathogens such as pertussis uh, and mycoplasma. Uh, however, to specifically evaluate or screen for COVID-19 infection and the SARS coronavirus 2, uh, one can send a nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal uh, specimen, a swab, for nucleic acid amplification testing, which can be done uh, fairly rapidly, both commercially as well as by uh, county health department labs. Other diagnostics are emerging, including molecular diagnostics, uh, and also a blood spot testing for immunoglobulin M slash G uh, for a presence of SARS coronavirus 2. It remains to be seen the utility of these uh, testing strategies in a screening process versus uh, reserving the use for confirmatory testing. Treatment, unfortunately, as with many other viral infections, uh, is, is scant. There are no confirmed yet antiviral therapy uh, agents with known effectiveness against SARS coronavirus 2, although multiple agents are being evaluated. There is emerging evidence that some antiretroviral therapies may, uh, su such as what we see used in HIV infection, uh, may have some impact. Passive immunotherapy, including uh, treatment with monoclonal antibodies, uh, is also being evaluated for impact. This is very similar to uh, uh, interventions used in Ebola virus disease, uh, uh, initially in West Africa uh, and currently uh, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Refractory cases. This is a concern, uh, whether it's because patients are progressing into severe disease despite initial supportive care or uh, for those patients who appear to have been clinically improving and then apparently relapse, who, who enter into respiratory failure and shock. Uh, there's a suggestion in a manuscript just published in Clinical Infectious Diseases that uh, patients who are uh, male, uh, who present with anorexia and an absence of fever, may have higher risk of developing refractory cases. Ultimately, the best treatment is prevention, and to that end, uh, at least six vaccine products separately are being developed as I speak. Uh, at least one of those um, has been administered to live human volunteers in California in the States. It remains to be seen the utility or, or efficacy of the vaccine products. Uh, until a day in which vaccines can be appropriately developed and are effective, then social distancing and quarantine are, are the two most robust interventions possible. Social distancing, a limiting contact with other human beings within at least six feet, avoiding large gatherings, um, practicing, of course, good cough etiquette, etc. Uh, and then the, the, the more um, uh, invasive, if you will, intervention, that being quarantine. Uh, and this involves um, closing borders, uh, closing restaurants, pubs, concerts, sports events, any area in, in which humans may, may uh, be too close to, 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 uh, to violate that, that six foot distance rule. It or, or quarantine and, and that degree of intervention was ultimately used very successfully in Wuhan, China. Um, and it is hopefully being rolled out around the rest of the world um, as I as I speak. Uh, it remains to be seen uh, if this is too little too late, however. The two challenges that are, are anticipated and one is attempting to avoid via quarantine. Number one um, is to limit the number of patients uh, at risk who progress into severe disease with COVID-19. Uh, this is a fear because the sheer number of patients who might develop this, this progression uh, have high potential to overwhelm the healthcare system uh, of any country in the world uh, and, and certainly uh, overrun the use of ventilators and healthcare providers, hospital beds, uh, e even hospitals available to, to care for them. Um, and and th this, was, this was found to be a major challenge in the initial uh, province in, in China, in Wuhan, uh, which experienced exactly those complications. The other concern that's being addressed with quarantine is to try and, and limit the, the insertion of, of SARS coronavirus 2 
into the the viral uh, uh, milieu uh, of humans in in the world, um, such as has happened with influenza both A and B. Uh, viruses that are so inserted have the potential for seasonal recurrence and the same impact in terms of morbidity mortality um, as we're currently seeing with COVID-19 and C uh, many times uh, in a decade with influenza A and B. So the more that one can be effective in preventing spread of COVID-19, the more successfully we'll see our way through this particular pandemic. But this is just one of many, many, many more to come. So until then, continue to support vaccine development, continue to develop antiviral development, and wash those hands.